Good afternoon, everybody. Brian Newber here from GoldenBlack.com, live in Mackey Arena, following Purdue's 71 to 42 win over number eight Michigan State. Yes, good afternoon. Uh, this will be the rare opportunity to post a rap video when the sun is still up. Um, wait a minute, no, it's almost six o'clock. Never mind. Uh, anyway, this will be my rare opportunity to know I'm posting a rap video when most of my audience will have a chance to see it. I know a lot of you go to bed early, um, but tonight, hopefully, we'll get this up for prime time, squeeze it into your big Sunday night TV viewing uh, schedule. Uh, Sunday night's a big TV watching night, I know. Um, so here's one more thing you can add to the, uh, to the list. Uh, Purdue beats Michigan State 71-42 again. I don't think anybody's really astonished that Purdue beat Michigan State. History has shown Purdue is always a really tough out at home. Um, the 29-point margin, if newspapers exist anymore, I'm not really sure uh, some days. Uh, this will jump off the printed page of people tomorrow. The, the margin, the 29-point margin, uh, tying the Virginia game for the largest margin of victory ever against a ranked opponent for Purdue. That is a mouthful. Um, but yeah, th th this outcome uh, will be an eye-opener for the college basketball world. Uh, this was on national television. This was quite an opportunity for Purdue not only to get a great win, a signature win, a resume win, really help itself from an NCAA tournament perspective, but also to showcase itself. Uh, when you get on national TV on CBS, that's a hell of an opportunity uh, for you. And Purdue could not have done any more for itself uh, than it did today. And you know what? This was a dominant game for Purdue from start to finish, uh, but I would like to talk about the finish first. Uh, break this game up into uh, four 10-minute quadrants. Purdue won all four of them. Quarters, not quadrants, quarters. Break them up into quarters. The final 10 minutes, I think, was the single most impressive 10 minutes of basketball from Purdue I've seen in, probably in quite a while. Um, Probably this season. I'm thinking there was some. A, a, there was a good run at Marquette. That all for naught. But uh, Ohio had a, a great run. But look, I think Michigan State is college basketball's kind of standard bearer. I'm using that word a lot lately. I'm probably draining it all into meaning um, for being the same every year. Now, obviously, Michigan State's the stars come and go, um, but Michigan State is the same. Uh, they are the same team. They run like crazy. They shoot a lot of threes. They've always got three bouncers around the rim whose, whose shirts don't seem to fit very well, um, who fight like hell around the basket, who rebound, who outlet, who run, who, who just throw their bodies around. And then they've got three of them so that they can play their asses off for 10 minutes and then put another one in. He can do the same thing. Eight minutes maybe is a more reasonable um, estimate of playing time uh, duration. But this team is the same team. And part of that identity, culture, whatever buzzword you want to use, is when they got to go, they go. You know, um, I call it the Michigan State extra gear, or MSEG, if you will. Not to be confused with the stuff in your Chinese food or where the Knicks play, uh, the MSEG, um, Michigan State extra gear. You've seen it a bunch of times here in Mackey Arena. The game where Rafael Davis made six threes in the first half, whatever it was, and then last year as well, you know, two examples of Purdue playing really, really well, putting itself in a great position, and then the MSEG kicking in, Michigan State making a run, and all of a sudden Purdue has to fight like hell to win both of those games. Um, you were in that moment again with 9.55 to go uh, in this game because Purdue was up 22 in the first half. Um, with 9.55 to go, whatever time it was, Malik Hall, perhaps you've heard the name, um, gets Michigan State within 11 by making a three-pointer. And if you were a Purdue fan or a Purdue partisan of any kind, a stakeholder, watching this game on TV, and in that moment you didn't say, oh, God, here it comes. Oh, God, here comes Michigan State. Something along those lines, perhaps with some expletives mixed in, then you're not aware of history. Uh, you're not aware of what Michigan State is. They have won this very game a thousand times over the years. They've almost won this game against Purdue twice in this building within the last few years. Uh, it's just what they do. And they were peeling back the punch to throw at Purdue, and before they could even throw it, Purdue punched them right in the eye and knocked them out. And it was the most impressive 10 minutes of basketball. See this? Um, the most impressive 10 minutes of basketball I think Purdue's played all season long. 24-6. Um, to 6. 
I believe, was the 24 to 6 or 34, no, not 34 to 6, 24 to 6. Um, that tells you half the story. How they did it was the other half of that story because Purdue beat Michigan State at Michigan State's game. They were tougher. They played harder. They defended like crazy. And they put Michigan State away when Michigan State is really, really hard to put away historically. And when you have a chance to put Michigan State away, you have to make damn certain they're away. And that's exactly what Purdue did. And they did it again, physicality, toughness, effort, and defense. And a little bit of pristine offensive execution mixed in there was nice too uh, for Purdue. But those things really drove just a dominant final 10 minutes in a situation where Michigan State normally thrives. Um, Evan Boudreau, to me, was the guy in this game. If there's any one individual difference maker in a 29-point game, um, there certainly there can be. Um, to me, it was Evan Boudreau. Uh, I think this will go down in, in Purdue people's memories as the Evan Boudreau game. Capital E, capital B, obviously, because style is proper names need to be capitalized who wouldn't capitalize a proper name, but also capitalize the G because this will be a, a, a singular proper event as well, the Evan Boudreaux game. Not to say he will not help or cannot help Purdue win games the rest of the, his Purdue career, which is has half of a season left basically, but this will be the game people remember him for. They'll, they'll talk about when they remember big wins. You know, you remember uh, the Rafael Davis game I, re I referenced earlier. Rafael Davis had a great career at Purdue a great final two years at Purdue, uh, left an impact beyond that Michigan State game, but that's what you remember that game for, you know. Any Scott brother who might have played against Indiana in this building, you know, that's what you remember about those games. Sterling Carter has a crazy game against Indiana one year. You remember that. Evan Boudreaux is going to be what you remember about this game because it was him, a guy who needed to see the ball go in, one of 13 from three, and he's a good shooter for his position. One of 13, whatever it was, from three coming into this game, goes three for five against Michigan State. And that's not even the most important part of the game for him. I've never seen a player take two charges in 30 seconds. He did that right before Michigan State was in that position where you thought it was going to make its run. That's two empty possessions. If the run starts sooner, you know, perhaps things unfold a little bit differently here. I've never seen a player take two charges in 30 seconds. Um, the offensive rebound of the Travion Williams pair of missed free throws that he turns into two free throws of its own. It's a big play. You know, people talk about offensive rebounds, second chances, that they're, they are, are demoralizing to a defense. Well, Michigan State backed into a stop there by Travion Williams missing two free throws. Evan Boudreaux took it right back. At the end of the shot clock, he gets fouled. Not only do you give up two free throws, but you do it at the end of a shot clock, no less, uh, in screen and roll with Sasha Stefanovic. The play, and I had to go back and watch the highlight. I might be giving him too much credit. Um, I just saw him flailing around on the floor as Michigan State turned it over from the floor. Eric Hunter takes the ball, dribbles that way. That means nothing to you, I know. Um, for a layup, this is, you're up 24 points with five minutes to go, however much time is left on the clock, and you're diving on the floor to create turnovers for layups. That's what I'm talking about, the mentality Purdue played with in those final 10 minutes. When you have Michigan State down, you need to make sure they are not getting back up. And that is a really hard thing to do against them. And Purdue did it, and Purdue was relentless about doing it in the second half. And that falls into a lot of things that have come into question about Purdue uh, here this season. Toughness, fight. Typically, you don't beat Michigan State without toughness and fight. However you want to define them, you know them when you see them. But also maturity. Uh, you know, Maturity has been called into question a few times uh, this season for Purdue. You know, um, But I think today was a game where... All of the stuff, when you have a team that has good enough players to win with, that's not having the sort of season that it would like to have or was uh, you know, capable of having, which I think we can safely say about Purdue, all of the stuff that falls in between the cracks between those players and everything that brings them together is things like that, the maturity, the effort, effort the toughness, the intelligence, the basketball IQ, you know, stuff like that. And I think today... Or starting at Michigan, I think you've seen a lot of that stuff start to fill in. And that really raises the interesting question of what Purdue becomes because of this now. What it's capable of from here on out. Because 
you've seen in the past week pretty dramatically, seemingly change its trajectory. Um, this game, again, was the opposite of the Illinois game. The Illinois game was gross, grotesque. Stick pencils, needles, whatever you can get, and put it in your eye bad. And this was the exact opposite of that, um, almost in every way. And that speaks to a team that is changing its trajectory. And I think a lot of those intangible things had to do with it. I think individuals had to do with it. I, Evan Boudreaux, obviously, I think Nogel Eastern was a big part of this. I know a lot of you look at box scores, look at the scores, and when it's only it's no points or two points, you say he didn't play well. He didn't do anything. That's part of the story. Purdue did want him scoring more uh, this season simply because a lot of people needed to score more because you needed answers offensively. I don't know why he struggled to put the ball in the basket when the opportunities presented themselves this season, but he is not a guy where you can look at and say, okay, no points, two turnovers. He was he killed Purdue today. Because what he does at the other end of the floor really affects things. I think, you know, you can say what you want about the refinement of his basketball skills sometimes. There are some limitations there. There are some gaps in his skill set, admittedly. But when you get in a street fight, having the 6'7", 220-pound guy who's bigger and stronger, more physical than the guy guarding him at all times, and the guy he's guarding most of the time, all the time, who rebounds like crazy, plays hard, and really wants to win, that's a pretty good combination to have. And I think that really showed up in this game. I think this game is the model for No Joe Easter. Um, you know, very efficient on low volume, high percentage offense, four or five for nine points, seven rebounds. Um, played really good defense like he always does. Always. He's a constant on defense. But just, you beat Michigan State with grown men. And No Joe Easter physically is one of Purdue's grown men. Travion Williams being another. Um, go back and watch the left-handed tip-in of the offensive rebound for the end one by Nogel Eastern. That is Aaron Henry on his arm. Uh, Aaron Henry is a 6'5", 210-pound swing man, but he is basically a forward. He is 6'5", 210. He is not Foster Lawyer. He is not some little diminutive guard that he should be able to just shed. Nogel Eastern took him and just whatever you do, to corn when you when, when you remove the peel is, is it the peel I have no idea I'm not from Indiana um, but when you shuck it you, you pull back the, the 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 skin I don't know that was kind of what he did to Aaron Henry he just took him and just kind of chucked him just chucked him and that, again that's a 6'5", 210 pound guy made to look like a blow up doll basically um, against no gel Eastern size physicality and tenacity in the offensive glass a great example of what Nogel Eastern brings to the table, even when he's not, you know, contributing much offensively. Beyond those two guys, you know, I think Eric Hunter um, is that guy now for Purdue. Purdue has a nice little history of guys you, who come in, you don't expect them to be really good defensively. Eric Hunter is becoming that guy. He's becoming that Rafael Davis, that Dakota Mathias. The guy, again, you don't expect much of them from defensively when they walk in the door and they turn out to be really good. He was really good. Nogel Eastern was really good. The big guys, Travion Williams and ball screen defense, had to have been really good for this outcome to be the way it was. Matt Harms only plays 13 minutes, whatever it is, 11 minutes. Um, he's the better ball screen defender than Travion Williams is. Uh, Travion Williams must have done a really good job in dribble containment defense as well. Brings me to my next point. Uh, Travion Williams is becoming a uh, star, potentially. You know, it feels like I say this every six to eight games about a Purdue big guy. It feels like he's becoming, you know, a really good player, if not a great player, uh, because Purdue's had so many of them. And so often they've had a couple of them on the team at the same time, and I think this is another year where that's the case. Matt Harms and Trayvon Williams are both really good, uh, if not on their way to great. And um, Trayvon Williams, the last two games, keep in mind he played 43 and a half minutes three nights ago. Didn't turn the ball over, scored 36 points, grabbed 20 rebounds. Turns around to play the hardest playing and most physical team in the Big Ten. Don't think for a second, too, that Trayvon Williams not being in a Michigan State uniform doesn't make Michigan State look a little bit bad. And that doesn't matter um, to, the, to the, the people in charge there, Tom Izzo notably. Michigan State, my guess is, wanted to do everything in its power to make sure Trayvon Williams didn't show them up, like he did in a loss last year in East Lansing. Um, a loss is different, but he did. Um, 
I was surprised Michigan State started with Marcus Bingham uh, on him. I know length can be an issue for Trey Van Williams sometimes, but physicality is the greater of the two issues, and I, you know, I don't know what they were thinking uh, in that sense. I'm sure they had some rhyme or reason to it. But this was another game. Trey Van Williams largely did whatever Trey Van Williams wanted to do. He had some putbacks he missed, but I, I'm nitpicking a couple putbacks after a 16-7 and seven game, four assists against the number eight team in the country on CBS, against the most physical team in the league. He is doing what he wants to do, when he wants to do it, and he's been really good at it the last couple games. It seems like that path he was on before Illinois, before Butler, you know, is he's back on it. He is becoming a really good, but also a really consistent, more importantly, player. And uh, again, it falls into what I said before about it. It'll be interesting to see where Purdue goes from here. Because these last 90 minutes of basketball, uh, the past two games, Purdue has looked like it's changed its traje trajectory for the better. And, um, you know, they got to do it away from Mac Arena now. They'll get an opportunity at Maryland, not an unbeatable Maryland team, but a team that'll be really, really tough to handle there. Um, but Purdue has shown what it's capable of here. It showed what it's capable of at Michigan uh, on Thursday night. They were good enough to win. They just didn't. Uh, but we'll see where Purdue goes from here. They look like an NCAA tournament team right now. They sure as hell played like one today. Uh, they looked like an NCAA tournament team Thursday night at Michigan, even in defeat. Um, you know, Purdue's got an opportunity here to have just changed its course and to make the most of it after a week of practice, an opportunity for Matt Harms to get healthier. Purdue's got a really good opportunity here. They had a great opportunity here against Michigan State maximized it to its furthest degree. Now they have another opportunity here to really show that they've turned a corner this season to stay, and it'll be interesting to see where they go from there. So that's kind of what I got from uh, Purdue 71 to 42 win over Michigan State. This went way longer than I wanted it to. Sorry. Um, for Brian Uber from goldblack.com, thank you for watching, thank you for reading, thank you for listening. Thank you for processing our materials, however it is you process our materials. You will go a week now without a rap video. I hope, like hell, that you guys can get through the week without some sort of withdrawal. But the next time I talk to you, it'll be at the Xfinity Center um, at Maryland. I'm sure their fans will yell stuff at me because anything associated with Purdue will draw the ire of uh, the most cutthroat fandom probably in the Big Ten. So hopefully they don't hurt my feelings too bad. I will be, um, I'll be there, and we'll talk to you afterwards. Thanks, everybody.